My name is Alice Shaw and I'm director of the Center for Thoracic Cancers at Mass General Hospital in Boston. Over the last several years, there's been many advances in the field of advanced ALK-positive lung cancer, and I think the most um, exciting one for many patients has been the development of new, um, what we call next-generation ALK inhibitors. <clears throat> there's a whole class of second-generation ALK inhibitors, such as seritinib, electinib, and brigatinib, all of which have now been approved for patients with ALK-positive lung cancer who have previously received crizotinib. So over the last um, you know, several years, we now realize that patients who fail on the first generation inhibitor, crizotinib, most of them are still very um, ALK sensitive, meaning that they will respond to a more potent um, ALK inhibitor, such as seritinib, electinib, or brigatinib. And so I would say one standard approach um, to treating patients with advanced ALK positive lung cancer is to use sequential first followed by second generation ALK inhibitors. In just the last six months, we now actually have data on the use of these more potent second generation inhibitors in the first line setting. So that means instead of treating patients with crizotinib as their first therapy, more and more of us are moving to second generation inhibitors, particularly electinib. And in this setting, frontline setting, these second generation inhibitors appear even more active than crizotinib, which is why they're becoming standard of care. However, despite this activity of second generation drugs like electinib, seritinib, and brigatinib, we know that at some point, almost all patients will develop resistance. And this occurs at different times for different patients and also occurs in different ways. And we have spent many years now studying the development of resistance to ALK inhibitors, starting with crizotinib as the first generation inhibitor, but now really focusing on second generation inhibitors, trying to understand resistance to these agents so that we can develop new and effective therapies to overcome this resistance. So we recently performed a large um, study of patients who were ALK positive and had undergone uh, repeat biopsies at the time of relapse on a second generation ALK inhibitor, um, primarily seritinib or electinib. And these uh, results were published um, about a year ago in Cancer Discovery. And what we found is that the molecular mechanisms of resistance to second generation inhibitors are different um, compared to first generation inhibitors. And I would say most notably what we found is that whereas for crizotinib resistance, where only about 20% is mediated by crizotinib resistance mutations, notably the gatekeeper mutation L1196M, in the setting of resistance to second generation more potent inhibitors like electinib and seritinib, a little over 50% of patients now have developed these specific on-target resistance mutations. So much more common for patients when they fail a more potent ALK inhibitor to now have a uh, ALK resistance mutation emerging um, in their cancer. The other very notable thing that we found is that depending on the specific second generation ALK inhibitor, the exact spectrum and type of resistance mutations that um, can be impacted by that particular ALK inhibitor. So for example, we see uh, quite commonly I1171 mutations emerge when patients relapse on electinib. However, that mutation is really never seen on seritinib or brigatinib because those two second generation inhibitors are active against that mutation. So we basically see a very distinct resistance mutation profile with each second generation inhibitor. And this is very important information to know because this now allows us to potentially tailor the selection of yet a third ALK inhibitor based on the resistance mutation that emerged. Now one of the most common resistance mutations that we see emerge in all of the second generation ALK inhibitors is the very refractory ALK mutation, ALK G1202R. And we see this in about 20 to 25 percent of patients who are relapsing on second generation inhibitors. And so this mutation causes resistance, um, kind of cross resistance to first and second generation inhibitors. But fortunately, we now have at least one drug, a third generation ALK inhibitor, lorlatinib, which is able to overcome the ALK G1202R resistance mutation, both in preclinical studies and in the clinic. So in the phase one, two study of lorlatinib, which completed already, we have analyzed patients' um, results based on their mutation. 
And we have been able to show that patients with this particular resistance mutation, ALK G1202R, are highly responsive to lorlatinib. They're, they tend to respond, and these responses tend to be durable. So I would say for about half of the patients who relapse on a second generation inhibitor and have an ALK resistance mutation, we almost always will have um, uh, the possibility of using another either second generation inhibitor or the third generation inhibitor, lorlatinib.